Hey guys, Ahmed here and in this video I will show you how to use Smart Animate on Figma to create better animations for your designs and let's get started. Now, this tutorial will consist of two main parts. In the first part what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in three different situations how you can use Figma Smart Animate functionality to create some animations. They will be for scaling an object which is the first one here. Then we will learn how to change the position of an object with Smart Animate. Then we will learn how to change an object's opacity and animate it. Once we master these three techniques I am actually going to make you apply all what we learned in this three four screens that we have here that will let you apply what you learn but also let you see how in a real world scenario with actual product design screens how smart animate functionality would work so that you can understand the context of use as well to actually begin i'm gonna press f for frame shortcut on figma and i'm gonna drop a frame i'm gonna go to design menu and i'm gonna make this 400 to 400 and that's pretty good. Next, I want to put a circle inside this frame. For a shortcut, I'm gonna press O for circle shape. I'm gonna make this 60 by 60 and maybe put this in the center. And that's pretty good. And I'm gonna name this as scale. And then to copy and paste, I'm gonna press option and drag. And, oops, Figma bug that. Press option and drag to make a copy. And I'm gonna make this one basically like 240 okay so we scaled it up okay so i want to first show you how to enable the smart animate functionality and then i'm going to give you the rules you have to follow so that it works so to enable it you want to go to the prototype section and you basically click on the element you want to animate and you drag it to the next frame that you want to, to animate to so then this thing will pop up which says interaction details and Figma is smart enough to pick smart animate already in this functionality. You have other stuff like instant, dissolve, move in, move up, push, slide in, slide out. But when you select smart animate, basically you are telling Figma based on the objects I have in both frames, figure out the best way to animate them in a smart manner. Let's see how this would work. So on click is the event we have here and then on click smart animate will activate for the circle element. So let's see how it works to do and I'm going to click and it scales up as you can see. Now that looks pretty good. If I want it to be a bit sm slower, let's say if I want it to be a bit slower, I could pick different like 500 milliseconds and I could pick also in different manners that it could go to the second frame we could just do ease in or ease out ease in and ease out you can do a lot of things here what matters though for smart animate to work well is this number one rule i want you to remember now look at both of my frames and in each of the frames the elements name is ellipse one and ellipse one now both frames also have the same name scale and scale the names of the frames don't matter but the objects that you are going to animate inside those frames have to be the same. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's say this first uh, circle is ellipse 1 and this circle is also ellipse 1. Let's make this ellipse 2. Now, they have different names and see how it's going to actually animate. And let's play this again. Now, have, did you un understand what happened? It actually just made the second one appear, so it made the first one disappear and the second one appear instead of scaling it up. Because Figma Smart Animate functionality is not that smart at all. You need to match the names you have so that the whole process will work. Especially if it's an object that you are going to use Smart Animate for. They have to match screen by screen. And this changes how you basically design certain screens that you want to animate which you will come into in the second part of the tutorial. So I'm going to press F to create a new frame and I'm going to name this basically position and I'm going to make it the same width and height 400 400 and then I'm going to add another circle to this frame let's say 36 to 36 and then I'm going to press down option to drag it oh no my bad 
and then I am going to press option to drag the frame and I'm gonna move this circle to around here so the only thing I changed is its position now based on the rule I check if the namings are the same ellipse 3 ellipse 3 that's good and then I'm going to go to the prototype and I'm gonna click on my circle drag it here and basically I'm going to make it maybe on drag is better for us to actually change its position and smart animate is selected that's good let's try it and I am holding it and dragging it and that works and I'm gonna press F as a shortcut and I'm gonna do 400 and 400 again and now what I'm going to do is I am going to press O for shape again and this time it will be opacity and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make 100 to 100 let's say and I'm gonna give this a pass-through of 10% so it's very transparent almost maybe 20 yes 20 and I'm gonna drag the whole frame by holding option down on Mac and I'm gonna make this 100 okay and then so the only difference is the opacity of the element and I'm gonna do the same I'm gonna go to my prototype section drag this flow here and I'm gonna do smart animate on click yes I want this to be an on click event and I'm gonna press play and it fills now what we can do is we can maybe change the color a bit so maybe it's a bit hard for you to see let's maybe darken all of these and let's get this one so you can see better let's make this play again and it fills yes all right let's apply what we learned in a real world scenario i have this screen it's like a discover kind of the city app and i have i'm going to show the user a few cards based on the top navigation they select from museum food trips or events and I removed the other two screens and we are going to animate this in two different functionalities the first one is basically to do that I have to go to design and I'm gonna drag hold option to drag to a copy and what I want is that if a user taps on any of the links here like food trips or events the cards they see should actually change so I'm just going to do it for the food section so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the food part selected so I'm gonna press ctrl C to pick a color and I'm going to actually move this line we have to roughly around here for center that looks centered and I'm gonna make the museum text the same color as the unselected texts here okay so I want you to remember again I am not changing any element names I am just dragging them around for this functionality to work and what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna change the images we show so that we can actually see a difference and we can simulate better so to do that I'm gonna press command slash and I'm gonna use my Figma plugin called unsplash now if you are wondering what kind of plugins you should use to actually create a much more productive workflow for yourself on Figma please tap on the video above it will actually give you a lot of good plugins that will make you more efficient but this is one of those plugins that I really like so I'm going to type restaurant and I'm just going to hold these and pick some that looks good and for this one I want let's say this okay and that looks pretty good so now that they look different I can a bit animate I'm gonna go to prototype and I am going to hold on to the object that will be clicked and that we will animate so it will be the food text here and I'm gonna drag it here and I want it to be smart animate that's correct 500 milliseconds is a bit slow but it would let us actually see what happened now if we are ready let's try this it's loading and if I go here you see how the line got actually positioned into the farther away on our screen how it moved horizontally that is exactly what we wanted now this was the position functionality and now I want to also do our basically opacity functionality 
and scaling functionality as well. So this is the second screen that you go to once you click on one of the cards. It's the details screen. Now, as you can see, when you go to a detail screen, you see the text and also similar posts. Now, what I want the user to first do is see is to animate this card that they click to above. So I scale it up and then I want the text to appear. So I am actually doing two animations. One is scaling an element up. And the second one is to make the other elements text and the similar sections appear. So I will need a second screen actually. And what I want to now do is I want to hide the text and the similar parts so that I can make them appear later. So I'm going to go to the screens and I'm going to make their opacity zero. So they will be hidden. Now, Ahmed, why are you not removing them? That's a great question because I want to use smart animate opacity functionality and so they have to stay on the screen, but I can make them invisible. There's a difference between deleting an element and making it invisible and we want it to be invisible so that we can actually connect this screen and this screen so that we can make the elements appear again. We cannot magically animate elements that don't exist, but we can make elements that are invisible, visible. So now what I want to do is I am actually going to hold this screen up oh, and let's also add the reverse, right? You can go from food. So if you click on the museum, you should go back and that also makes sense. So we can have a back functionality as well. And then what I want to do is I'm, I click on the top left card and I'm going to drag it to here. Now, what I want is I want this to smart animate and I want to see first how it looks. So let's see, let's play this again. And let's see if I can go back. That looks perfect. And let's see how this works. It looks amazing. And that looked pretty good. It's slow enough. And then what I want to do is for the second one, I want these text to appear. So what I will do is I'm gonna also this time I am going to click on the entire screen and I am going to hold this here and what I will do is I will select a different event instead of on click I want to pick after a delay and roughly maybe 300 milliseconds so roughly 0 0.3 seconds and let's see if that works so let's see if this works so we are here we go to food we come back to museum and then I click on this and then it appears. Okay, it's a bit slow. Maybe 200 milliseconds as delay, eh? Maybe 200 milliseconds. And I want this to be maybe 350 milliseconds. And let's try again. And you have to do these to actually fine tune a bit. Let's go back. Ah, that looks better. That's very smooth. I think that looked pretty good. Now, this is your introduction to the Smart Anime Tutorial on Figma. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button below so that you will get a notification when I release new videos on Figma so that you can become a better UI UX designer. Have a great day and take care. Now, before you go any further, I actually added two videos to the end of this video that I believe will help make you a better UI UX designer on Figma. Please watch either of them if you haven't already. I believe they will improve your design skills a lot.